It's a great question. It's one of the things that I'm probably most proud about our city is, you know, we're a debt-free city. So and I think it's our conservative values that have really allowed us to be successful and nimble. What's up? Benj here with Triple Cord Real Estate. So a few days ago, I was fortunate enough to interview a member of the Meridian City Council. Luke Kavanagh, and we talked about all kinds of things related to the city of Meridian, uh, what the city's distinctives are, uh, what the financial position of the city is, what are some unique features about Meridian, and some of the challenges that they are facing as a city uh, looking into the future considering the fact that Meridian is one of the fastest growing cities in America. So it's a great conversation. It's got tons of info in it, um, especially if you've ever thought about or considered moving to the city of Meridian, you need to watch this video. So uh, watch this video. Be sure to watch to the end because there's tons of great info. If you haven't already subscribed, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell right down below. And as you watch the video, hit the thumbs up button if you learned something and enjoy. Today I'm pumped to have a member of the city, the Meridian City Council with me uh, to talk about the city of Meridian. So we got Luke Kavaner here. Luke, thanks for joining us. And uh, thanks for being willing to talk a bit about one of the fastest growing cities in America. No problem. Happy to do it. Uh, the subject of Meridian is one of my most favorite things to talk about and looking forward to sharing a little bit of insight and knowledge uh, with your YouTube subscribers. So maybe just tell us just a little bit about kind of Meridian in general. I wrote down here, what are kind of some distinctives of the, of the city of Meridian? Sure. Well, great question. And you know, Meridian has been a community that has always seemed to be growing, changing, and evolving um, ever since I was a little, little kid. So when I, uh, my parents moved to Meridian in 1984, I was four years old. Uh, that's the community I've always known. At the time, we were a population of like 6,000 people. And so when you fast forward today that we're 120,000 people, our community's changed a lot. I think one of the big things that defines Meridian kind of outside the Treasure Valley and across the country is our world-class parks. Um, again, when I was a child, we didn't have a park, let alone an amazing park system that we have today. We've got parks for dogs, parks for kids, parks for seniors. We really try and provide um, usable, um, enjoyable open space for citizens, no matter your age or ability. Is it true? I mean, is Meridian actually one of the fastest growing cities in America? Yes, you know, Meridian continues to uh, be a choice destination for folks all across the country. You know, we um, continue to see record growth year over year. It's a big challenge on the city council to um, control that growth. Um, obviously, more people that come to Meridian creates opportunities for jobs and shopping, but it also brings challenges in our schools, our roads, as well as our police and fire services. I think that's mm -hmm. always the top priority of the city council is to make sure the areas that we have control over, that we're meeting the demands and the needs of our citizens. And then for things like schools, like roads, the city council doesn't have any control over, that we're working hand to glove with our partner organizations to minimize the negative impacts of growth. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, you look at from, so again, when I was a child, Meridian was 6,000. When I graduated high school, we were like 30,000. When I moved back in 2007, we were right at about 70,000 and now at 125,000. So, you know, in a 10-year wow. span, Meridian doubled in size. We took a breath and then we tripled in size. Um, and you wow. see that in all corners of our community. There's new residential developments that are growing up of all different shapes and sizes. And so what is that, you know, I'm kind of interested in the housing market, right? Sure. Um, I work in housing. What what kind of challenges does that present? I mean, as far as housing, are there are you guys always thinking like where can we expand to next? What are you know what are, what do we do with zoning laws? Like are those like kind of top priority issues that you deal with, or maybe talk a about that? So yeah, it's it's a I think a really really good question because I think one of, while the, the city council doesn't ever try and get into the private business or um, you know the free market's ability to uh, respond to the demand, we do have an obligation to our citizens. And so one of the things that we, we do work on and, and every city is required to have what's called a comprehensive plan. So it's really a guiding document from where the city is going to grow and how we're going to do that. Now, what that means for folks in your industry or for people who are looking to move to Meridian is it ensures that we have a diversity of housing options. So, you know, when I was a kid, there, there you had two types of options for housing in Meridian. You had 
big houses with big yards and small houses with big yards. Um, and that was, that's great. But was, as you well know, is that, you know, the demands of, of the home buyer have really evolved, especially over the past 10 years. And there are some folks that want, you know, a small house on a big yard. Um, or there's somebody like me who says, man, I had a lawn mowing business when I was a kid. I'm really not excited about taking care and maintaining of a, of a big yard. So we've got a big house with a small yard. Yeah. You've also seen, you know, the evolution of these really uh, world-class open spaces, pools, clubhouses, you know, uh, neighborhood developments that create these amazing open space opportunities so that you don't necessarily need as large of a yard. We've also seen, you know, a huge demand for folks that want, you know, kind of a nice yard, but don't want to have to maintain it. And so these kind of planned communities where lawn maintenance is included. And I think ensuring that we've got diverse housing options, and that includes, you know, um, rentals, apartments, um, senior housing. I mean, it's not just about, you know, apartments or homes. It's about a different type of house set, a different type of multifamily, and ensuring that really somebody could, you know, move out of their house when they, when they turn 18 and graduate from high school and have all sorts of different options that would allow them to stay in Meridian until they're ready to retire. I think that's something that's always important to me is that I want my kids to be able to stay in Meridian and be able to afford to live in Meridian as well. And do you think, uh, do you think it's still affordable? I mean, with the growth and with the, you know, with the price increases that we've seen, I mean, year after year, yeah. is it affordable to buy a house on a sort of, I don't know, mid-range kind of salary in Meridian? Uh, it, 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 that's a really good question. And it's one that I, I sometimes hate having to answer because if I'm being honest today, I don't think it is. Um, and it's, to me, it's, it's a big priority for me being on the city council because Again, my parents chose to move to Meridian because it was a place that they could afford to buy a home with a yard. Right. And while well, Meridian used to be kind of the place that everybody had to go to because of it was a place they could afford, we've really become a community of choice. And that brings a lot of opportunities. But it also prices people out of, out of living in our community. And that's not something that I feel really good about. One of the things I think that will help that is as we continue to have diverse housing options, that helps to level the market and make it easier for, you know, a first time home buyer to be able to afford to live in Meridian. It makes it easy, again, kind of that example of when you know, my son graduates from high school that maybe he can find a place to stay in Meridian if he wanted to go to ISU or BSU. Um, but it's also about that retiree market, you know, so somebody who's ready to downsize to be able to afford there as well. Um, Honestly, if I think today, you know, we get a lot of um, housing applications where the, the applicants talking about affordable housing, viewing that in the three to $350,000 range. I just don't think that that meets um, the average income for a family in Meridian. Now, and I, and I hate to jump down a rabbit hole, but the other piece of that is really focused on economic development. So as we continue to bring what I call career wage jobs, so moms and dads both work only because they want to, not because they have to. I think that helps to level the playing field and make housing more affordable in Meridian. For the yeah. first time ever in our history, we have more people traveling outside of Meridian into Meridian to work than we have Meridian residents leaving our community outside of our borders to work. So that's meaning that there are these career wage jobs that are existing within our community that can attract people to who want to be able to stay and live in Meridian all at the same time. And what are, I mean, what, what's a, just maybe a couple examples of these jobs that are attracting people to Meridian? Sure. So you can look at anything from, you know, uh, the Paylocity Complex um, that's uh, located at 10 Mile on I-84 as being a great job creator. Yeah. We're continuing to see large career growth in the health science and medical technology areas. So again, seeing uh, St. Luke's being a catalyst at Eagle Road. We've got a Saltzer Complex again coming in at, at 10 mile with another planned um, project uh, at Shinden. But we're also seeing again continued growth in the retail landscape. Costco coming to Meridian, the new Winco. Those are oftentimes, you know, service sector jobs that help to support an overall growing economy. So it's, it's not about just plugging one particular type of, uh, of career track in Meridian. Um, it's about really again creating diversity. I remember when I graduated from college and moved back to Meridian, Marina was kind of viewed as the home of the call center job. So if you wanted to work in a call center, there was lots of opportunities in Meridian. You don't hear us talk about that anymore. We're really creating diverse career opportunities, uh, whether it's your first job or as you end your career, there's lots of opportunities to be found in our community. You, you mentioned the 10 mile area. Is that, I've heard people you know, say that that's kind of like the future development area of Meridian. There, are there plans to yeah. really like, turn that into like the village type of a thing? Or so 
that segment right there at 10 Mile and I-84 is really part of a, a strong collaboration between the city's urban renewal district and the local government. And really it shows that when um, private enterprise and government come together and build a plan, what can really be accomplished. So again, you look at, at Brighton's got their corporate headquarters out there. You've got uh, Paylocity that's out there. You've got a, a, a some great businesses um, like Zenify that have relocated from downtown Meridian because they've outgrown their space to move to that area. What you're gonna see follow is, again, some restaurant, a little bit of service industry that'll support. And you've also got car wash. You've got, again, a Salter that's gonna open up, uh, what I believe is a 24 hour urgent care center right there as well. You've also got primary health that's just down the street from there. So that corner has really blossomed to provide a lot of different opportunities, both again in terms of service and employment and also there's a there's a piece of housing that's over there again what really could be looked at some some nice workforce housing apartments that are available um, to meet the needs of our community that was all kind of designed as one large plan um, and i think it's working really really well i love that as kind of an employment sector it's so conveniently located to the interstate kind of to my earlier point about traffic coming in and out at 10 mile mm -hmm. i would prefer that we converge all of that right there at 10 mile at the interstate rather than deeper in Meridian where all of that traffic is gonna to have to go two or three miles in when they go to work and two to three miles when they're leaving from work. Yeah. Um, I think that you're gonna to continue to see some growth there at Temo. Not so much like the village, which is largely you know, retail service industry. This is gonna be more about again, career, being a career wage job center. Um, I think there's a lot of opportunity, again, on the other side of, of 10 Mile to I-84, as we continue to see growth in that central core of Meridian, I think there's going to be a lot of opportunity for, for continued growth and success in that area. Hmm, cool. What, um, kind of shift gears a little bit, how does, how does Meridian, you said we can be friends because I live in Boise, how does, <laughs> how does Meridian compare to Boise? Because I talk to, I literally talk to a lot of people that are moving from California and they just hear Boise. And so they sure. say, we're moving to Boise, right? We're moving right. to Idaho. Differences well, between the two cities that come to mind? Yeah, you know, it used to be, you know, you, you knew when you were leaving Boise and entering Meridian. Our, our borders are blurred at this point. Um, and I, I love Boise and I've got great friends that are on the city council. And again, uh, my office is located in Boise. It provides a lot of opportunity. But your point is correct. When folks are looking to, to move from outside of the Treasure Valley to the Treasure Valley, they often pick the word Boise because it is our, our central core. It is uh, our capital city. I think that there's different opportunities that can be found um, in Meridian that are different than Boise. Again, Boise is a much longer established community. When you look at Meridian's history, particularly what we've seen recently, we're still a very, very young community. Um, I think that Meridian has often been that community for young families. So again, people that are looking to purchase their first home, Meridian has been that location that they serve. Um, I think there are some differences. Meridian has a, a much lower property tax base than you're going to find in Boise. So you um, are not only going to be able to purchase a home for less in Meridian that you own Boise, but your tax bill that you'll be paying every year will be lower as well. I think for some people that's appealing. Um, one of the things that I also really appreciate about Meridian, and it's not a dig at, at Boise, because again, I think that Boise does a really good job of meeting their citizens' needs, is we have a really diverse elected official base from across the community. So where a large chunk of Meridian's elected officials, or excuse me, of Boise's elected officials, kind of come from the north end, west end area, um, all of Meridian City Council members are, are kind of spread out across the city. For instance, I live in South Meridian. We've got council members who live in West Meridian. We've got council members who live in North Meridian. I think our citizens that have lived here for a long time really appreciate that they've got folks that are kind of plugged in in different corners of the community and have a good feel for the total issues that are impacting the city. Boise being a much larger population has much larger challenges that they face than we do. They also have a much larger footprint in terms of how far their city will grow out. Meridian, we're, we're landlocked. Again, we're a municipality that's surrounded by other municipalities. So there's a, a finality to how far we will eventually be able to grow out where Boise doesn't necessarily have that challenge. We have Star that touches Meridian. We have Eagle that touches Meridian. We have Boise that touches Meridian. We have CUNA that touches Meridian. And then we have Canyon County and Nampa that touches Meridian. So as all of those municipalities continue to grow, I mean, our, our name means in the middle, and we are truly, you know, the uh, epicenter for the region's economic base. We're also the epicenter for the region's traffic base, um, and we really are geographically located right in the middle of the Treasure Valley. So as all of those cities continue to deal with growth issues, it's going to impact us as well. What about the sort of crime rate, poverty rate? 
what can you say about that? How does that maybe compare to Boise? If you know off the top of your head, what? Yeah. So Meridian's crime rate is is lower than the city of Boise's, but again, I think a lot of that has to deal with uh, with population. You know, Boise has a much higher population, and I know that for me, as someone who's you know grown up in Meridian, you always want to keep crime low, but you know, the more people that come, just law of averages are going to increase your crime. One of the things I think is a perspective that not a lot of people have that live in Meridian is, is I recall a time in our community's history where, you know, Wednesday nights after five o'clock, we didn't have a city police service. We were reliant on the county sheriff's office to, to respond to any calls for service in, in Meridian. Likewise, I remember a time until the, uh, the late 90s when our fire service was all volunteer. So when you when you compare to what we have now with it with I think a, a world class very thoughtful police service uh, we have six fire stations all located throughout the community we have a more responsive um, set of emergency responders today than we had when I was a child. Mm -hmm. Likewise, though we have more calls for service for fire we have more calls for police service, um, and I think as 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 a nation and as a state and as a city. We really look at what um, police service means looking forward, you know, moving forward into the next 20 years, because I think as we look at law enforcement, it's got to evolve, it's got to change to meet the demands and changing focus of our communities. Um, so I think you know, my, my father retired from the Boise Police Department, so law enforcement services are near and dear to my heart. Um, and I think that both Boise and Meridian will continue to have challenges. I just think that some of our challenges are a little bit different based on the geography and the population size. Yeah. Good. And then what about the sort of the financial position of Meridian? Um, yeah. I, I saw on Governor Little's uh, Twitter feed last week, I think it was, he said that, that he, he posted a thing that Idaho is like the number one financial position in America. I think they have, they're ranked number one with credit worthiness and then uh, like number five or so in, in debt, kind of debt to surplus uh, ratios. How does the city kind of a Meridian factor in that? What, what's your position? Yeah. It's a great question. It's one of the things that I'm probably most proud about our city is, you know, we're a debt-free city. So um, we've had a long history of not going out for bond um, for anything. We pay cash. If, when we needed to build our new city hall, paid cash. We're in the midst of a, a very significant water and wastewater project um, at our wastewater recovery center. In one, to accommodate growth, and in two, to accommodate um, new regulations from the EPA on, on our water system. We pay cash for that. Um, so I think one of the things that, that attracts a lot of folks to Meridian that are moving from other parts of, of the country is that, wow, Idaho doesn't carry a lot of debt and this city carries, carries zero debt. Um, in addition, one of the things that I'm also really proud of is that, you know, every year our city council looks really long and hard before we make any decisions to take a property tax increase. You may be well aware of this, but under Idaho law, um, taxing districts like a city or a county or a library district can take up to a 3% property tax increase without asking for permission from the voters. Mm. Now there are some unit municipalities that automatically just take the 3%. And frankly, for a city like Meridian that's growing at the rate that we are, it would be very easy for us to do the same. Um, but our city council and our mayor on an annual basis really look at that long and hard before they make a decision. For instance, this year, we didn't take a, a property tax increase. We took a 0% increase. Last year, I believe it was just a hair under 2%. Um, I really appreciate that our city council and our mayor are really looking out for the taxpayers with every decision they make. And I think that is something that's both appreciated by our current citizens, as well as something that's attractive by potential future residents. Wow, you're making me want to move across the, the <laughs> road. I'm literally right on the road between Eagle. I should have moved on the other side of Eagle. <laughs> Meridian sounds like a great city. I, I didn't know that about the property tax, actually, that you can raise without getting pre, uh, approval from the voters. Um, that's neat. Zero debt. Hmm. Zero debt. Yep. And, you know, when, when we look at doing, you know, we're in the midst of, of looking to purchase uh, and build two new fire stations and expanding our police services. And so rather than go and ask the voters to give us more money, we're trying to find cost savings. And much like we can probably a lot of your YouTube subscribers, like it is in our household, we save before we spend. Yeah. Um, and, um, again, I know there's some people that think going out for bond and having future residents help pay for that, those things. There's nothing wrong with that philosophy. It's just not the philosophy that we share in Meridian. Um, and I think it's our conservative values that have really allowed us to be successful and nimble despite significant economic challenges that we've seen over the past 10 years.
Great. Well, let me, we're getting a little bit long, so let's just wrap it up. Is there any, can you think of anything else maybe that would be of interest to know about Meridian? People that are moving, you know, from out of state and they might choose Meridian as a possible city to move to. Yeah, I, I think the biggest thing is despite being, you know, like 120,000, I, I really feel like that Meridian still feels like that same small town that I grew up in as a kid. And so if people are looking to want to move here, man, I would really encourage them to get involved. Call the mayor's office, come to City Hall, learn about our community. And when you choose to make Meridian your home, get involved, find a, find a nonprofit or an organization or a volunteer opportunity to help continue to keep Meridian that great community that, that I love to call home and that I think a lot of your subscribers would want to look to call home. Maybe one day we'll be able to call you a Meridian resident as well <laughs> we'll see <laughs> all right thanks so much luke i appreciate it and thanks for watching you know you you who signed signed or clicked onto this video if you want to watch another video mine you can click on some of the other thumbnails here but thanks again to luke and we'll see you guys in the next one. Wonder, she loves me as she needs to know i love her